Welcome, my name is Paul Gregory and this is the last video in the series looking at actually migrating from Windows Server 2003 to Windows Server 2012, 2012 R2. So here we're just going to look at a basic file server migration. So we're going to have investigate uh, migrating the data and migrating the file shares. So we're actually going to do a data migration. Now I appreciate that in a lot of scenarios people might actually not be migrating the data because they're going to connect SAN attached storage to the new system and they might just need to replicate the share information. So the steps we're going to go through, you could use that for just that purpose as well. As always, my contact details are on the screen, paul.gregory at qa.com, my Twitter and my YouTube channel. So please feel free to actually uh, request videos, um, send me questions, any help I can provide, be greatly happy to do whatever I can. So this is the last in the series that I originally planned, um, looking at file server migration. Hopefully you've seen the introduction video which will talk about the test environment that I'm using. And videos two and three are focusing on migration of Active Directory. Video four, a very important infrastructure service, looking at the migration of DHCP. So just a quick recap on the environment. Um, we're gonna focus on QAFS01 and QAFS02 in terms of the migration of the two file servers. From the point of view of this, I've assumed that all the Active Directory activities have actually been completed and we've migrated those systems across. So we should basically be the last sort of step in our migration scenario. Again, because we're talking about a file server, then obviously the client will come into play and we will show that we can now access the resources from the uh, new client, uh, as you would expect. So switching over to the desktop, uh, of my machine. Let's go and have a look at our virtual machine. So the first thing we want to do is just confirm existing connectivity. So we're just jumping across to our client. We're just actually going to open up a couple of documents that are on our file server. So hopefully we can just prove that we are serving that data. Um, so hopefully we'll go over to the architecture PDFs and we'll open that up. So we can see that we're actually being able to access documents as you would expect to on a file server in a very conventional way. So obviously the plan is now to migrate that data across to our new file server. So we can currently see it's currently on the QAFS01 file server and we're going to migrate across. So going across to the Windows Server 2003 machine, we'll just confirm that this is Windows Server 2003. I'm sure uh, you can tell by the desktop that it's uh, a product of that vintage. So opening up a PowerShell prompt, what we will first of all do is we'll start to make sure we've got the correct environment in place. So we've got the PowerShell prompt on the 2003 machine. We'll also open up the PowerShell prompt on the 2012 machine. So first thing we're just going to have a quick look at just, just really to confirm is on the 2012 machine, just going to show you by using the get hyphen SMB share that the shared folders for the architecture PDFs and the books does not exist on the 2012 machine. So hopefully what we should see is we should see some shares appear as part of doing this. So we're gonna use the inbox migration tools. So again, we're just gonna confirm that the inbox migration tools are not actually uh, uh, imported. They are installed, so I've used server manager to actually install the Windows migration tools. And now we're just going to add the snap in to enable the migration tool. So microsoft.windows.servermanager.migration. So this will import the migration tools and if we run the get command command again, we should now see that we've got all of the migration tools. So what we really care about here is the send SMIG server data and the receive SMIG server data because these are the ones that allow us to migrate file server data. So obviously on the, on the destination machine, we're gonna run the receive hyphen SMIG server data. We're just gonna quickly look at the help a um, couple of things that we need to point out is first of all, obviously there's a password which is used for uh, connecting. Um, and there's also a port number. So port 7000 needs to be open on the destination machine to allow this to work. So we run the command again. We've just typed in the password that we need to know on the source machine. And we can sit there and see that the destination machine is now sitting there waiting to receive. And it will sit in that state for about five minutes and then it will just terminate if it's not received any data. So back on the 2003 machine, if we just go and run the SMIG deploy, this will actually go and import the migration tools for us on a Windows Server 
2003 machine. And again, um, if we just go and have a look at the SMIC commands, we can actually see the SMIC commands are all sitting there. So again, if we look at the uh, get hyphen help and we look at the send SMIC data, you've effectively got obviously the, the information about the destination machine. And significantly, you've got the include option. Uh, we'll look at this, but effectively the include determines whether you want to include data, just the share configuration or, or both. So let's just go into Explorer and let's just look at our folder structure. So you can see we've got our two shares there, architecture, PDFs and books, and they're actually in a media folder. So I want to replicate that structure and I could use tools like Robocopy, for example, uh, if I want to, but it's, as it's only one folder, I'm actually just going to go and uh, uh, create a folder called media. So I'm just going to create a new folder on my 2012 machine. Normally on a file server, you might be copying the whole volume. So at which point you wouldn't need to do this because I'm just doing a, a subfolder on the OS volume. I need to go through this preparation step. So we'll run the send hyphen SMIC data. We'll then specify the destination. So QAFS02. We'll also specify um, sort of the, the, the password parameters and the include parameters. Okay, so, but we'll do those through prompts just to show you. So source path, obviously C colon backslash media. Destination path, again, C colon backslash media. So I could change the destination if I wanted to as well, uh, if, if uh, I wanted to do that. So you can see it's now asking me to enter the password. So this is the password the receiving system is, is configured. And it's now asking me what I want to include. I want to do shares, file, or shares, data, or all. So I want to do all, okay? So hopefully we can now see we've collected data and we've transferred the data. Now that seems to have happened really, really fast. Um, however, how I've run that command, um, what it's done is it's actually only migrated the content that's actually in the, the media folder. So it's actually only migrated basically um, the couple of folders and um, the one file that was in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the command slightly and I'm gonna put the minus recurse parameter on it. So what it will do is it will actually go all the way down the directory structure. So we'll re-enter the password again. You can see the receiving system still sitting there. And what we can now see is actually we're gonna send the data across. Now, this is actually quite a lot more data we're actually going to transmit. So how long this takes is very much about the speed of your network connection and so on. So we'll, we can actually see this is gonna take uh, quite a bit longer. So I'm going to pause here and I'll time lapse the video and we'll come back and see what has, has happened at the end. So we're just coming to the end of the copying process now. So hopefully we can actually see that it reports back all the objects that have actually been migrated. And obviously we could redirect that to a text file and we could use that for analysis later on. So switching back to our 2012 machine, hopefully now if we go and run that get SMB share command again, what we should see is we now have some new shares created on our 2012 box. Okay, and obviously if we go into the media folder, we can see the folders, we can see the data. Obviously the proof of the pudding is, is this content actually available via a network connection? So we want to actually sort of test this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and actually change how these drive mappings are being created. So my drive mappings are being created via a login script in group policies. So I'm just going to jump across and actually make a change to my um, login script. So we're just going to edit the group policy for the sales team. We're going to edit the user policy. So this will be the user logon policy. And we're just going to change the drive mapping actually to point to the new uh, server. So what we should see here is it's currently pointing to QAFS01. We just want to change that now to QAFS02. So we're just going to go and update those drive mappings. So we'll save that information back and we'll shut that down. Obviously in the real world, you'd need to wait for this to replicate across your domain controllers. Um, in my instance, obviously this isn't gonna take very long as I've only got two of them and they're sitting next to each other. So hopefully we should be able to actually log in and test it pretty soon. Just to confirm, I'm not um, taking any chances. I'm gonna shut down the old 2003 machine so that there's no chance of actually 
mapping the drives to the old machine so I do know that um, if I get access to the data it's going to be served by the new file server so hopefully we'll go over to the workstation we shall just log off the workstation and we shall sign back in using exactly the same user account so we'll just enter the password and what we should see is that the uh, login script will get processed we won't actually see the login script get executed but the login script will be processed and hopefully we go into explorer and we should see that we've actually got our drive mappings and they now point to QAFS02 and we should be able to access those drive mappings uh, and access the data that's on them. So you will notice it just takes an extra uh, couple of seconds to uh, run the login scripts so we're just sort of waiting for that extra, extra period of time because the system sort of detecting obviously changes have occurred. So hopefully we're, we're signed in now just waiting for the uh, confirmation that the network's up and running so we just See, we get the sort of network icon. So hopefully into Explorer, come down to the computer object. We can now see the two mappings are for QAFS02. And hopefully we can sign in and we can access the data. And we should be able to be able to access that content. We'll just try the other share just to confirm that both the shares are actually working. So we'll give that a go uh, and try and open a document up on the second share. Um, might take me a few goes to decide which document I want to open, but uh, we'll just pick on um, the live migration document and try, try and open that. Um, just be aware from a real world point of view, you, you, know, you might need to log in more than once, you know, a couple of times just to pick up all the mappings, depending how quickly you're doing it after you've made the changes. Again, you know, I've made changes very, very quickly. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope it's been really useful for you. And again, just to reiterate, if you'd like to keep in touch, then please do. If there's anything else I can help you with, other videos, then please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.